Herzlich willkommen zu Senkrechtstarter, dein YouTube-Kanal für alles über Raumfahrt. Ich bin hier mit dem Philipp und hinter uns steht Juice, das Raumschiff oder die, das, die Sonde, die ich unglaublich finde und äh, ich meiner Meinung nach wirklich das Abgefahrenste, was wir in Europa je irgendwie da rausgeschickt haben. Und äh, ich freue mich sehr, dass ich Philipp hier habe. Philipp, thank you so much that you had time for me and that you invited me here. Um, what is your position here at Airbus? <laughs> well, I'm Philipp Pham. I'm uh, leading the Earth Observation and Science Domain for Space Systems at Airbus, meaning uh, Earth observation for weather forecasting, climate monitoring, Earth observation in optical, radar, infrared, for, and science for all the uh, solar system exploration, meaning working on uh, three pillars, the civil institutional domain, European space agencies and national agencies, defense for our national home countries, and also export because Airbus is the first uh, export industry for Earth observation satellites worldwide. Cool. So, um how many, I mean, um, I went through this um, facility and it, it looks huge. So how many people are working here? Yes, it's uh, one of our main sites for Airbus Space Systems. We are about uh, 6,000 people working on three locations. Here you have the Astrolab, let's say, facility, which is uh, an industrial assembly, integration and test facility. We have also the main site for engineering, which, on, uh, which is on the other side of the roundabouts. And then we have a, a site which is specialized in satellite imagery and digital services uh, to process our satellite imagery. Mm. Um, yeah, most people probably know Airbus because of the airplanes and uh, I am from Hamburg, so there's a big Airbus facility as well. Um, I often wonder why that is because satellites are touching our life like everyday life and uh, what is your opinion or why do you think uh, people know more about uh, i think uh, the airbus brand name is perhaps uh, a little bit older uh, in particular in the aircraft manufacturing and you know you are taking airbus as a as a passenger but uh, the airbus uh, space and airbus defense and space let's say contour is uh, an assembly of uh, previously uh, different brand names like astrium like mbb like dornier like CASA, mm -hmm. a certain number of industry which have been, let's say, assembled together to form now Airbus Defense and Space. And you're right, satellites are less known because in your daily life you are using 20, 30 satellites for uh, positioning, navigation, telecommunications, weather forecasting, meteorology, uh, a, a lot, a lot every day. Mm -hmm. uh, even Google Earth is using our satellite imagery. So you don't know it, mm -hmm. but satellites are at uh, the center of our daily life. Mm -hmm. um, normally when I'm talking with my uh, um, viewers, they all have this story that they wanted to become an astronaut when they were a child. Um, have you been always um, a been a fan about space flight and do you really wanted to work in uh, space flight or how do you come here? <laughs> space flight is, I would say, the iconic uh, vision of space with respect to bringing human to the next frontier, mm. should it be uh, ISS, International Space Station, now it's Moon and Mars, and perhaps further exploration, and even the space flight for tourism. Mm. But uh, in fact, space for me uh, started with telecommunication and Earth observation, more on satellites uh, to, to provide useful uh, services uh, to, uh, to, to mankind. Mm. Uh, so, uh, and currently with Earth observation and science, I'm, I'm more how can we contribute uh, to, to safeguard our planet, to better know the rest of the universe, rather than between bracket only space flight. Mm -hmm. So that this spacecraft behind us, it's like forefront of um, space exploration. I, for me, it's like a really, really big thing because it's an European satellite, a European um, uh, mission on a European rocket and most of the instruments are from, from, from Europe. Um, what do you think? Will there be something similar like this to, to go even farther from Europe um, and in our time? I mean, yeah, well, the European Space Agency uh, is kind of pushing forward a certain number of scientific uh, missions, and some of them are, are very big. JUICE is one to go to the Jupiter icy moons. It has started in 2015, it will be launched in 2023. It's pulling together uh, 80, uh, 80 suppliers from all over Europe. And what is really key is that each and every country of the European Space Agency is contributing to science, mm. meaning to the knowledge of mankind to know better 
And I believe, and this is on the plan of ESA, that next time we will go further to Saturn, to Pluto, and perhaps uh, beyond the, the, the solar system, just to know more, because mankind wants mm. to, know, to know more. Uh, on the other hand, we have also collaboration with a certain number of, uh, let's say, countries, key countries in space outside Europe, like NASA. You know that uh, moon exploration is, is done with NASA. You've been to Bremen, etc. Mm. Uh, we are exploring also some collaboration on Mars, uh, also with the, uh, with the United States. But there are also some smaller missions uh, led by our national space agencies, also with India and with some other, uh, let's say, big countries, national agencies. Mm. So I think this, this is taking further shape uh, because also the emerging countries want uh, to have also their own exploratory missions. Mm. You have seen that probably recently with the UAE, mm. but also with India, etc. So it's, it's kind mm. of uh, taking uh, more and more momentum. Mm. On the other hand, Airbus is uh, really good at building these geostationary satellites. Um, is there something in juice that could be used on a, I don't know, like a big satellite later, or is it more the opposite, that yeah, there are the uh, commercial space flight is so good that there are systems that you say, hey, we're going to use it on juice because we know that it's working. <laughs> Difficult to compare because uh, in space, uh, with respect to the various domains, telecommunications, navigation, earth observation, science and exploration, let's say the, the, the span of the space conditions is very different mm -hmm. in terms of, uh, let's say, the environment but also in terms of customers' expectation. Mm. You're right, in telecommunications, we are quite mature. It, it's been more than 30 years old. We have been learning a lot. We know very well the environment to go to geostationary orbit, to operate a mission for 15 years' lifetime. We've been more progressing on uh, the capacity to embark more, to gain weight, to be more efficient for the bit rates, etc. So this is one part. On exploration, like JUICE, uh, we are enduring very specific uh, conditions in space, very high and very low temperatures. We have a very long journey of uh, seven years up to 2031 with a kind of you know, gravitational help to get there with a long journey. And then we have got uh, 3.5 years of operational mission uh, with an uh, overview of the, of, of the moons. And then finally, uh, the last year on, on Ganymede. We have also specific uh, let's say requirements with respect to the electromagnetic cleanliness, with respect to a certain number of uh, highly sensitive instruments to, to, to have their mission come true and to, to make it work. So very different environment which lead to different designs, uh, let's say different endurance and also different tests, longer tests, etc. In the case of, to respond to your question, sometimes yes, there are some kind of lessons learned or overlaps. And for example, here we've been uh, putting in place with CRISA uh, a power uh, distribution electronic supplier, a specific uh, new version with the, which is digitally controlled that we are going to use back on uh, geostationary missions. Mm -hmm. It's one of the examples, but I would say between these missions, there are not that many commonalities. Mm. I um come um, over the, the, the fact that uh, Airbus uh, also helped to, to industrialize like uh, small satellites to, for uh, um, internet satellite constellations. So OneWeb is a, a big word there. And I've heard that uh, I think it's done here, right, in uh, Toulouse? Or, um... In fact, we have started the, um, the first 10 spacecraft final assembly qualification here in Toulouse. And then we have, uh, uh, let's say, built the full facility in Florida. Uh, to, uh, for the mass production of the OneWeb satellites. Currently, we just celebrated uh, two weeks ago uh, the, the completion of the first full batches, which, which is 650 uh, spacecraft. So there are, we have 450 in orbit, and then remain to be launched a little bit less than 200. Next launch is uh, with PSLV from, uh, from India. Uh, and uh, uh, we, we've been learning a lot in the mass production of those uh, constellation of, of telecommunication spacecraft. Mm -hmm. So this learning has been, I would say, thanks to what we do in aircraft. So we, we have been pulling some capacities, competencies from uh, aircraft production, together with the knowledge of the specifics of space, like, you know, uh, uh, electronics qualification, parts and PCB qualification, plus the, the, the qualification testing with mechanical, thermal and uh, electrical tests. 
uh, to, to qualify the, the final assembly line. And then, thanks to our learning, we've been able to cut to the very bare minimum the, let's say, the tests for the, the, the generic production to enable uh, several uh, spacecraft production per week mm. uh, and then to, to launch the constellation. So mm. it, it's kind of mix of competencies and learning and also the capacity of various uh, expertise uh, from teams pulled together uh, to, uh, to come up with this, uh, I would say this success mm. because uh, the only one uh, competing currently is Starlink mm. from Elon Musk and we, are, we will be almost there simultaneously for the go live of the full service. Um, was there something that you didn't expect it that um, was a big uh, game changer or where you um, gained a lot of speed or um, saved money uh, through this um, automatization of the OneWeb satellites? Yes, because for the, you know, space has been confidential for a while, like very specific, mm -hmm. very specific components to use, very specific processes. And what we've learned is that uh, you could go more uh, to, to uh, commercial off-the-shelf equipments mm -hmm. that you can qualify or delta qualify or protect. So it's enabling to lower the cost, uh, to quicker the assembly, uh, to, uh, to have also an easier supply chain with respect to uh, more components available, uh, I would say uh, production which could be done in some other facilities. So all this contributed to lower the cost, to shorten the schedule, and also to, um, to, to enable a, a different way of designing mm -hmm. and also producing the, the spacecraft. So it has been also a big challenge with respect to our customers to make sure that they understand what we do, that uh, let's say they agree in particular because they are not used to accepting uh, customer of the shelf, uh, commercial of the shelf equipments with respect to previously a kind of uh, one-off or bespoke equipment tailored for space. Mm. So this has been a big learning, and also for launch, uh, because we've been, uh, we are capable to, uh, to do multiple launches. The launch cost, thanks to SpaceX as mm. well and Elon Musk, have been really coming down, enabling more launches, more flexibility, lower cost for launch, meaning an easier access to space. Mm. So this is the dynamics of the last, I would say, three to five years, mm. which uh, is very beneficial to, to space, as you have seen. Space is high on the agenda, a lot of startups, a lot of new missions, a lot of momentum uh, no. and, uh, in the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So is this something that will go into the, the big satellites? I mean, like OneWeb, they are not small, but they're much smaller than, uh, I don't know, like geostationary satellites. They're like buses, I, I would say. Like, um, Is there something that you say this, this is going to, to go to the bigger satellites also? Yes, partly. Uh, first, first, what we've been implementing in the OneWeb uh, small satellites, we are coming also from our experience in the geostationary big buses, mm. as you mentioned. <laughs> uh, but uh, what we have learned, uh, commercial of the shelf equipments, uh, and a more, a more agile way of working, different way of developing software and validating software and assembly integration and tests are being pushed uh, to, to other products where we, we have also the, I would say the numbers which can amortize, uh, let's say, the investment. Mm. In some of the Earth observation domain, we have uh, the capability to, to produce, let's say, a few tens of spacecraft. In geostationary, we are producing four to six a year. Uh, so there, let's say, the, uh, the copy and paste or the kind of, not copy and paste, but the adaptation of what we have learned in mass production can be transferred partially uh, to lower uh, cost, to uh, shorter schedules, mm. and to different way of working. Mm. Maybe uh, back to juice. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm really, really excited that I'm here and that I can see it because it's so amazing that this thing is going to Jupiter or to the moons and um, um, yeah the the furthest mission um, from the European Space Agency and um, JUICE has come a long way during its construction um, some of the um, work hasn't been done here at Airbus uh, why was that so um, in fact uh, European Space Agency is the collection of um, 27 uh, member states who contribute to, their, to a percentage of their GDP to science. The obligation of the European Space Agency and the expectations from the member states is to get a geo-return 
of their contribution, mm. meaning that you have to uh, to build a science program which pulls together, which pulls together, let's say the the credible contribution of all the member states' contribution, meaning that both you have to. Uh, uh, com complement, carry out some activities in some remote countries. Mm. You have to buy equipment from various suppliers all over the place in Europe. And for the assembly and integration and test of the biggest sub-assemblies, it's being made or done in several, let's say, key locations in Europe. For example, propulsion is mainly uh, carried out in uh, the UK and in Germany, mm. in Stephen H. and Lampel Dozen. We've been uh, buying the solar arrays from Netherlands in Leiden. Uh, we've been uh, assembling part of the spacecraft in Friedrichshafen in, in Germany. There have been some system tests uh, also at ESTEC uh, in, uh, in Nordwijk in the Netherlands. And then the final AIT uh, tests, the preparation of the launch campaign is being completed here in Toulouse. Mm. So in fact, a lot of sites have been, uh, let's say, uh, mobilized to work on JUICE. And the spacecraft has been traveling all over Europe, even during the COVID times, mm. uh, to, to perform all these, uh, these activities. Mm. Um, if JUICE is a success, and we we're going to, to assume that uh, it has um, developed for a long time, and I see the people here, so I believe in them that they built a wonderful spacecraft and that we have a, a reliable super launcher that uh, will launch it. Um, so my hope is that this kind of mission um, going to inspire European people to want to know more about space and to say, hey, uh, we as a European um, a group of people, we want to, to be at the forefront of um, going out there and uh, learning about the universe. Um, do you have a, a dream mission that you would like to do after Jews that is not that unlikely in uh, your time here? <laughs> yes, yes. Well, first and foremost, Airbus has never had any failure in, uh, in our missions, in our satellites, in, even in our scientific missions. We are known as the best uh, in Europe with respect to the most complex missions, in particular for exploration. We will use the last uh, Ariane 5 launch from Kourou in April 23, and then we are on board for a long journey. This mission is unique as well, never been done even for by NASA from the US because it will, let's say, monitor the, the, the three big moons of, uh, of Jupiter and then uh, spend one year around Ganymede before the end of the mission. My dream, a little bit like uh, the, um, uh, the, the Mars sample return, and this is one of, on, on the agenda of ESA, is to, uh, to, to launch uh, an, an exploratory mission further into the solar system and to bring back some, some samples uh, because uh, from, let's say, uh, uh, from, from the, 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 the monitoring of uh, big, big, uh, big planets like that down to or up to uh, landing on a planet, taking samples like we will do on Mars with mm. Perseverance and the Earth Return Orbiter, uh, which will be launched also uh, in 27 to come back in 31. Mm. Then we will have an additional knowledge of, uh, let's say, the components. Where was there life on this on this planet or on the on the icy moons before? Was there water, etc.? So I think the next step will be exploration further, but not only uh, taking pictures or having instruments and orbiting around those planets, but landing and then coming back. Mm. I think this is the, the next frontier. Yeah, this sounds amazing. This is a little bit like maybe Star Trek, where you know, like the humankind is going out there and um, taking uh, um, samples or making contact to other civilizations. So, like um, research, uh, there's also in my um, audience a little bit of fight between people who like Star Wars and Star Trek. What universe would you sh choose? <laughs> I must say that I'm more Star Wars than Star Trek uh, okay. because of the fun, because of the, I would say, not the innovation, but this, this kind of fantasy, mm. this kind of creativity. I like uh, innovation, new development, creativity, mm. things you have never seen before, uh, and also making it concrete in terms of, you know, kind of mix between what you see on your planet, on our planet, and what could come from other planets. Yeah. So I'm more Star Wars than Star Trek. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> 
Philippe, thank you so much for this um, talk. It was really amazing to be here. Thanks for your time. And uh, yeah, I hope to come back and see like the next missions that maybe take something from space back to Earth. <laughs> well, you're welcome. It was a real pleasure to, uh, to really have this discussion. This is a fantastic mission. It will lift off very soon. So we are all, let's say, fighting like hell to, to, to keep up with the schedule, to finalize the test. It's really the last, the last run, the last mile before the launch. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>